Bonsoir. Impressive to be here. Where in the world would you find China, the Chinatown gate at the footstep of a mosque in a street with a French name, driving on the left to finally reach the Roti Chinatown? This can only be in Mauritius. And Mauritius is a small country in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Small like a small city. Its geography, 60 by 40, is but a small city. Its economy is 30 times less than Tokyo or Mexico. Again, a small city. But its population, 1.3 million, still a small city. And Port Louis is its heart. But this population, this population is its greatest capital. It has the cultural diversity of three continents in one small island. Ten religions, 13 languages. We think in French, we write in English, and we speak Creole or Bhojpuri. This is the beauty of it. And it's a world in miniature in the whole Mauritius. This picture, no comments. You all know it. Australia. Sydney, the Sydney Opera House. Today, this building is 50 years old. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has put Australia on the world map. It is the pride of a nation. 20 years ago, the Guggenheim Foundation decided to go in Bilbao and to build this museum there in the middle of an urban, decayed industrial area. In one year, in one single year, tourism grew by 20 percent. Jobs in this sector were multiplied by seven in one single year, so much so that now all over the world, Bilbao, this Bilbao is known as the Bilbao effect. And every city is fighting to have their own Bilbao effect. What's the Bilbao effect? Why do cities compete to have the Bilbao effect? Cities nowadays compete more than countries. Cities in the same country compete. Berlin and Hamburg, Beijing and Shanghai, Sydney and Melbourne, Barcelona and Madrid. They compete to attract investment. They compete to attract talent to attract the best intelligent of the, intelligence of the world, to boost their city, but to boost their city through culture. Through culture. And all of them want this Bilbao effect. Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Baku in Azerbaijan. Hong Kong, 40 hectares of reclaimed land over the sea, West Kowloon district, 17 projects cultural project, the first one under construction, Chinese Opera House, again an opera. Second one, Museum of 21st Century, followed by 15 others to come. But behind, Landside, convention center, shopping mall, hotels, residential apartment, all together boosting the economy and driving the whole West Kowloon district. Culture is becoming a global driver. 7% of the world GDP is culture today. $2.2 trillion, 29 million jobs all over the world. And a good reason for us to think that Port Louis has all the good reasons to become, to use the same driver as culture to drive its future. Of course, it will still be an administrative city with a port, with activities of economy, but it will have to boost its living fabric so that it gets the vibrancy that we need for an international city. It will have to reconnect with an important asset, the sea, to reconnect to the sea. How? I like this idea, this analogy between acupuncture and healing 
the city. Imagine a number of needles placed not in the body, but in the fabric of Portlis, a number of projects placed strategically that collectively will heal it, relieve the city from choking, relieve the city from the urban cholesterol, and then boost the city and celebrate the city. First, reaffirm its capital dimension with one or two major cultural projects, again, the Bilbao effect. Put it on the world map. Second, create an art district where this cultural industry will boost the economy of the city. And you know this picture. You know how the city is cut into two by the, by the motorway today, a land part and a water, water part. Barcelona, before 92 Olympics, people didn't even know it was on the sea, but they decided to connect everything. And we got this great opportunity here along the motorway, two bus stations, where we can sort of centralize all the street vendors, all the street parking, into two locations to free the streets, to free the pavements, then use the same location to connect, but not to connect to the sea the way we usually do. Now you can live dangerously. You can try to cross the motorway, or you can try to swim in the flooded tunnel. But I think the, the third option which we propose to you is a tropical promenade like in the High Line of New York, or La Coule Verte in Paris, from Bastille to, to Bois de Vincennes, where people can walk and leisurely and connect to the sea, and it becomes one. Now that the sea is connected, we have to tame the mobility of the city. To tame the mobility is to diversify the offer. First, use the sea. Connect the outskirts of Port Louis to the center of the city for passengers, for goods and diversify the offer by the, providing the free street, freed streets to pedestrianize them, to create bus lanes, to create areas where people can walk freely, can cycle, can jog, or can just stroll to enjoy the city. But enjoy the city, must enjoy it into a secure place and also with art, with street furniture, with urban furniture, and with trees, where you can replant within the city. And then the people will reconnect to the place. But reconnection, two ways. One, through the mobile phone. They can reconnect and have a sort of a permanent dialogue with those who manage and administer the city. They can voice out the improvements, the suggestions they want to the people that are managing the city. And the people who are managing the city, they will be able to manage better with smart lighting, smart energy savings, smart parking, smart traffic, smart security, again through the same technology. And reconnecting the people will then allow those who manage the city to free the space to give back public spaces to the people who live or work in the city. Places where people can meet, can socialize, can enjoy, can eat and drink outside the city because it's freed from, from cars and freed from other places. And most importantly, they develop a sense of belonging, a sense of identity, and they bring identity to the city. And then, now that the city has been relieved, it's time to create value. And create value, we will first start by using art and culture as a connector. Using art and culture as a universal denominator, connecting all the people, connecting all forms of art. Let the music connect with dance, connect with literature, connect with painting, and also let Africa connect with Asia, let Asia connect to Europe, let East connect to West. Why? Because the fusion, the melting pot, will bring innovation. 
like Brazil. Brazil today has a form of culture, whether in music, in cinema, in literature, in food, totally different from their origin. Japan, Africa, Lebanon or Portugal. And what a wonderful offer you can then offer in a unique way to tourists, to the tourism, to the whole world. Second, we need to create a place, a place where you, the owners are encouraged to transform these old warehouses, these old heritage buildings, into innovation labs, into R&D labs for creative arts, for creative industries, into co-working space, into performing art places, where the artist will not only work, live, perform, but also celebrate the city, and where local and international artists will choose to live in the place. And now that you have created the value, it's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate, and I don't, no, don't need to repeat it again, 450,000 people in one weekend. What a wonderful way to celebrate it. Can, do, we do no longer have to prove this point again. And in Mauritius, celebration, we have 365 good reasons to celebrate every single day of the year whether in food, in music, in art, in, in fashion, in color, in light, we have everything that needs to be celebrated every single day of the year. But we need to do that through the youth. We need to do that through the youth because they bring life, they bring energy, they bring 24-7 energy to the city, which will then generate the innovation we want to fuel back the whole creative industry and set it as, a, as an example to the world. And what do we achieve with all this? What do we achieve? We will achieve 20%, the 20%. 20% value creation, 20% jobs, 20% for tourism, 20% to manage energy and the city better. But most importantly, we will create 20% of quality of life improvement for the people using the city. Because what is a city? But it's people. Thank you. <laughs>